What's going on everyone? It's Sean from All Things EV and last night Tesla introduced version 3 of supercharging for the early access program participants who have Model 3. Now I'll get to why it was only Model 3 owners later on in the video. I want to just give a rundown on what new things Tesla showed everyone last night at this particular event. So let's dive in. Tesla is installing a brand new network of one megawatt Tesla power packs to facilitate up to 250 kilowatt charge rates. This means that a Model 3 long range will gain about 75 miles in five minutes. If we assume Tesla will taper off charging speeds as the battery pack gets to 80% or as it gets closer to being full, you'll be able to recover about 235 miles in 15 to 20 minutes and a full charge in 30 to 40 minutes. Tesla says that this is a 50% improvement on charge times, cutting down an 80% charging time from 40 minutes and a full charge from one hour with version two supercharging. Not only is the charging rate a 2x improvement, Tesla further underscores their dominance in fast charging intellectual property. Tesla can now deliver on-demand high-powered energy and reduced V3 electricity costs by leveraging what's called peak shaving, buying electricity at low demand, low cost times, and storing it in the power packs. Electrify America says they do offer 350 kilowatt charge rates, but the only vehicle to date to accept that high rate of charge is the Porsche Taycan, which begins rolling out to reservation holders late this year. As an aside, I think that the power pack supercharger integration will be how Tesla executes on the semi-truck charging at 400 miles in 30 minutes. As compared to charging a, a, a Tesla truck, you can charge at your origin or destination. So while, while you're unloading your cargo, you can charge. Boom. Boom. So the, 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 reason, the, reason, the reason 400 miles is important is because you, ha you, you have to take a break eventually. Tesla also said that with the introduction of E3, there will be no more power splitting between stalls. This means there's no need to worry about parking directly next to another owner who is supercharging and seeing reduced speeds for both vehicles. In addition to V3 hardware upgrades, Tesla will be pushing out a software update to allow what they call en route battery warm up. This means that if you navigate to the supercharger on the map, your Tesla will begin to preheat the battery to an optimal temperature for that high speed charging. Though not entirely clear, it appears that the V2 supercharger will receive en route battery warm up functionality too. Last on the supercharger news, V2 supercharging tech will also receive a power boost from 120 kilowatt peak charging to 145 or about a 13% speed improvement. This means that Model S and X owners will see a minor charge rate bump as well. Why is the V3 supercharging thing a big deal? Or why should you care about it if you follow the EV space? Well, first of all, it's gonna save everyone time who own a Tesla. You go from an hour to a full charge to 30 minutes. And for most people, they're only going to need to charge 15 minutes. The second reason why this is a big deal is because those that own gasoline cars, this has always been one of the inhibitors because when you fill up a tank of gas, you're probably spending between five and 15 minutes at that gas pump. And for someone who wants to embrace EVs thinking that they have to spend an hour, let's say 40 minutes to an hour to charge their EV, that's a hard barrier to overcome in order to drive an EV. Now that the charge rates have been reduced down to 15 to 30 minutes, this gets it much more comparable to filling up a tank of gas. The last thing that I wanted to add is why I think Model S and X were not included in this V3 supercharging update. There's two reasons 
reasons. Let me dive into the first one. One, I believe that Tesla wants and needs to boost sales for their Model 3 as of March 7th, 2019, especially after the introduction of the standard range battery. This should lift sales of the Model 3 for those that were looking not only for a lowest price possible, but also for fastest charge rate possible. And second, and probably more importantly, it appears that Model S and X in their current form do not have the hardware to take on 250 kilowatt peak charging rates. As stated in the Model 3 teardown by YouTube channel Engineerix, the Model 3 has a larger charging cable and connector. Note the size of these cables. Um, they're huge. They're way bigger than you found in S and X. So that implies that 3 is capable of a higher rate supercharge than uh, S and X at present. They are very big. The big connector going into the top of the PCS or penthouse. According to Inside EV's research, the Model 3 battery pack has an improved cooling system in comparison to the Model S and X. An old Model S 85 kilowatt hour pack has the ability to cool 444 18650 cells with a single cooling ribbon pass. A P100D Model S pack levels up by cooling 258 18650 cells per ribbon. However, Tesla improves the cooling engineering behind the Model 3 with 164 217000 cells per ribbon. This means, according to Inside EVs, that with both more contact surface area and a higher conductance factor, the Model 3's cooling tube system can conduct 2.3x as much heat from the battery pack as the Model S. As best as I understand it, in order for Model S and X to gain access to V3 supercharging, they really do, at a very minimum, need an upgrade on their battery pack and charging system. If Tesla is going to refresh the battery packs in the Model S and X, would they not just want to refresh the entire thing? I'm not entirely sure on an engineering standpoint what is and is not possible, but it does create some nice fodder and rumor for when the Model S and X will be refreshed. And as a Twitter friend suggested earlier this morning, could the Model Y even also include a one more thing where Tesla introduces a re-engineered version of the Model S and X to take on and be eligible for that V3 supercharging. Thank you so much for tuning in to this video. A huge shout out to my Patreon supporters who are supporting me on a financial level with all of this EV information and news that's coming out on a weekly basis. If you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing. And if you're a regular, hit the like button. I'll see everyone on the next video.